Good afternoon, Facebook or anyone else who might be listening to this on any platform. I might publish it on now and in the future. Joe Bernstein here. Uh, I want to check in with you today about some things that have been percolating inside of me since last night. So last night, I went to a badass event as part of this group that I'm in, Cadre DC. Cadre's awesome, um, and it's full of amazing people that are, have beautiful minds, beautiful hearts that are wonderful to connect with and socialize with. It's business owners, it's CEOs, it's leaders, it's just brilliant, generous people. And so we had a quarterly event called University last, uh, last night, and we had this great presenter. I mean, you want to talk about an amazing, amazing performer and public speaker. With Bo Eason, and he was pr promoting his new book as well as a uh, event that he does to help people present with more power and more purpose. I'm digging it, right? And there was this huge polarizing effect that he had because one of the messages that he was teaching us was that to actually catalyze people into following us, to be the kind of presenter or performer or leader who people can't take their eyes off of, that they have to follow, that we have to do two things, right? One is, well, there's a bunch of lessons, but the two things I'm thinking of right now is one, embrace who we really are at the core. Be our fullest self, be our truest self, be our most authentic self. And the, the metaphor he was using is that human beings are predators. That not only are we predators, we are the apex predator in the whole of the known universe that we know about, right? Certainly of the earth because we've been able to dominate, we've been able to um, create dominion over nature and all other animals and other species, even other species of humanoids, when there still were other species of humanoids on this planet. So what he's saying is don't deny your greatness. Every single one of us is destined for greatness, but we, we learn to follow this belief that we have to hide our greatness, that we have to hide our power, that we have to hide the things that are extraordinary to, about us. And I'm with him on this message that it's never, it's never worth hiding who you really are from the world, especially if you want to create beautiful careers, relationships, businesses, communities. We've got to be who we are. We've got to connect with ourselves at the core. And he was using this predator idea as the way to catalyze people into thinking about that. He was also using this predator idea, this predator concept, this predator archetype, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, to connect this to a reality that it's worth it to learn how to move our body in a powerful way, how to connect our story to our core, how to learn to move in a way that's more natural for human beings. And I'm all over those two messages. The more that we learn to understand our body, the more that we give attention to our body, the more that we learn to move our body in intentional ways, the more powerful we are. And the more we actually believe our body, our intuition, and we treat our body with care, and we listen to it, and not just listen to the mind, the more powerful we are, the more catalyzing we are to the people around us, the more magnetizing we are to the people around us. This doesn't matter if we're talking about how we parent, who we are as friends, who we are in business, or who we are when it comes to dating, love, and attraction. So these are beautiful, powerful messages. But essentially, this idea of the predator scared a lot of people. And so I felt really uh, welcomed and wanted and uh, appreciated because there was a whole group of people, uh, some individu individually, but then some in a group that came up to me and said, Joe, you talk about men being more loving, being more connected, creating more space for others in this world, that it's time to create collective liberation. And that happens by liberating our souls and actually embracing a softer side and embracing emotion, right? So a couple of these guys showed up and they said, Joe, what do you think about this? So I want to go deeper into what I think about this. I totally get what he's talking about, about being the predator. But I want to differentiate that from being a perpetrator and differentiate that, all, both of those from being a protector and a provider. Because he's right. Human beings are predators. But the universe was providing wisdom this morning because I went out for a run and I listened to this book I've been listening to, Sapiens. And it was going over prehistory. And what he was teaching us in this book, Sapiens, is that human beings have outlived and outlasted and outwitted all other creatures and all their humanoids because of our cognitive capacity, because of our capacity for creativity, because of our capacity of connection, and our capacity for language and communication and collaboration. And ultimately, for our capacity to tell a certain story about the world 
that create structures that create an objective reality. Before the cognitive revolution, as he was talking about it, human beings only had one reality, which was the physical reality. But now we have an objective reality. Now we have a reality based on the perceptions of our world, the perceptions of ourselves, the experiences of emotion and the stories that we tell in our lives. And that is the power of what makes humans humans. Now, we're not the apex predator because we're the meanest and we're the most uh, aggressive and we're the most dominant. In fact, we're the apex predator because we figured out how to love. We figured out how to communicate. We figured out how to connect. We figured out how to be creative. We figured out how to collaborate in teams and units and cultures and tribes and groups. We figured out how to make cities. We figured out how to protect ourselves. Not because we're the most ruthless, mean, uh, you know, animal in the animal kingdom. So I want to make that clear. You can be a pet predator in his sense, which is basically get in touch with the animal instinct, the animal nature of human beings to be great. But you don't have to be a perpetrator. You don't have to be someone who's hurting others, harming others. You don't have to be someone who's out there and being predatory, like predatory lenders or predators in the world of um, you know, human trafficking or in the amazing fact there's still 30 million people in this world that are in some form of slavery, forced labor. You don't have to be a perpetrator. You don't have to be someone who violates others. You don't have to be someone who dominates others to get in touch with the animal nature. <clears throat> Next, he gave the example where he was like, hey, this sounds pretty masculine, right? But women, what about when someone wants to mess with your kid? What about when someone tells your kid that he can't do what he wants? Or tells your kid that he's wrong. And then all the women are like, yeah, yeah, that's when the predator comes online. Bullshit. That's not the predator. That's the protector. That's a protector because a predator is an animal that comes from instinct and wants to destroy, demolish, and kill. Right? A predator in the, in, in the natural world can be a perpetrator. But how we become a predator, someone who goes after what we want, someone who's not afraid of hiding our humanity and our animal instincts and who connects with the body, someone who creates powerfully for others and is ruthless in going after that in a way where it actually is powerful for others around them and themselves, they're a protector and a provider. The difference between a perpetrator and a protector and a provider is that we can tap into that animal instinct. We can tap into our humanity but from a place of love and service and connection. So for all my cadre homies out there who were like blown by this idea of the predator and who kind of were like, Joe, what do you think about this? That's what I wanted to share today. Now for everybody else who's listening, because honestly, the people I connect with in cadre, we're pretty damn bold and authentic and we're living our lives. And I don't see many people in cadre kind of hiding who they are. But a lot of my typical client they have a hard time being their full self, their true self. They have a hard time being authentic. They're chameleons. They're actually kind of like, you know, blending in to the group or the crowd or the crew. They're being one guy at home and another guy with their buddies and another guy at work. They are, have learned from a young age to be a nice guy who blends in, who gets by, who manipulates through covert contracts, who manipulates through being the nice guy here and being the aggressive guy at work and being the guy who lays down when his wife wants something instead of actually stands up for what he wants. And so what I want to teach you is one simple tool, just something that you can use today, which is a simple question. I don't want you to hide who you're being from the world. I don't want you to hide who you are from the world. So when you find yourself hedging and hiding, when you find yourself not speaking your truth to your wife, to your kids, and you find yourself being a chameleon, I want you to just ask yourself a simple question. Who taught you this? Who taught you to be this way? And when did you learn it? So somebody modeled it for you in your life. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was the media around us who's always filling us with messages about conformity and being a good consumer. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm big on consumer to creator. But who taught you this? Were they the role model? Were they the man? Were they the woman that you want to be? And maybe they had qualities that you do appreciate. Maybe they were someone that means a lot to you. Maybe they love you. Maybe it was grandma. Maybe it was mom. Maybe it was dad. Maybe it was a coach or a teacher who, you, who inspired you. So were they fully being the person that you want to be? And when did you learn it? Did you learn it when you were five years old? Did you learn it when you were 10 years old? 
Did you learn it when you were an adult, but you were in a relationship that didn't fit and you were in a job that didn't fit? And so you were just, you know, clutching and trying to hold on for dear life rather than thriving and living life? Who taught you to be a chameleon? Who taught you to blend in? And when did you learn it? Did you learn it at a state of being and a mature place of consciousness that you're in today? Right? So that's what I want you to do just for today. If you can ask yourself, who taught me this? And this can actually go for any behavior that's not serving us. Who taught me? When did I learn? From that place of awareness, you have consciousness. From a place of consciousness, you can challenge your behavior. From that place of challenge, you can act differently moving forward. That's what I got for you today. Make sure you lean in, understand the archetypes, perpetrator, predator, protector, provider. Big ups to Cadre DC, Bois, and I love what you're doing. And uh, that's an edgy message. And let's, let's see if we can, if you have more time, I imagine maybe you'd nuance it more and get some more clarity. But anyway, that's what I got for you today. Go out there and live your best life. Go ahead and be the protector and the provider. Stop hiding yourself. Connect with your body and understand that human beings have the capacity to create an objective reality. That's what our world is based on based on the stories we tell ourselves and the values that we buy into and the beliefs that we attach to. Peace.